Don't run out of. Right. Um, okay, so the heat of reaction from the last day we said was um, that definition there. And it's going to make even more sense as we go on because we we'll, we'll actually do an experiment where we where we calculate what that is. So it will hopefully make more sense there. So we said the last day, if we're looking at the heat of reaction of any um, equation, there's the same equation down twice. The first one is both of them are balanced. In other words, with the same atoms on the left and the right. The first one releases this quantity of energy. The second one releases this quantity. And the reason it releases exactly twice the amount is because you have twice the ingredients or twice the reactants. That makes sense. Think about another reaction, like if you burn coal, if you have twice the amount of coal, you're going to get twice the amount of energy. This is an exothermic reaction. And the reason I know it's exothermic is because there's a little minus beside it. And that's what we finished on the last step. We went back to these two definitions that we had met from before. An exo versus endothermic reaction. Exo heat is given off. Remind yourself by exo being like exit. Endo is taking heat in. That looks like in. So heat goes in, heat goes out. So if you had a thermometer beside an exothermic reaction, the temperature will go up. If you had a thermometer beside this one, the temperature will go down. These um, diagrams, hopefully you remember them from before. Your energy profile diagrams, you need to be able to reproduce this. This is your exothermic, so however much energy, think of a lump of coal, however much energy is in here, there will be less in the ashes that you finish up with. And the heat that's given out is what we use to heat our homes. Okay, this line here is the activation energy. So you label it as that. That's, you know, a lump of coal won't burn unless you heat it up as well. So you have to change it. You have to add heat to the coal in the first place to change it into, to make it burn. Or a, a match. Match on its own will have this much energy. When it's burned out, it will be here. But you have to strike it. You have to give it energy by striking it off the box. And if you do give it enough, if you don't give it enough, it stays as it is. If you do give it enough, it burns. So that's the activation energy. And it's an all or nothing kind of concept. So that's an exothermic reaction. And you can identify it from, you know, the products having less energy. The endo is always a little bit tougher to understand because um, this is like your ice pack. So your chemicals in your ice pack stay like they are unless you give them energy. You smash the two pouches and you give them energy. That is your activation energy there. We do EA. So you smash them together, you give them energy, they start to combine, and when they finish up, they have more energy than what you started with. Now this is always the confusing bit. How can you mix two chemicals together, they have more energy, and the temperature goes down? How's that possible? How can you give something energy and it gets cold? What do the two chemicals do with the heat energy that surrounds it? They absorb it. They lock it into themselves. So it'd be like what would, you can't visualize it, but if a candle could somehow grow, and replenish itself. It locks in, or basically it's like your phone recharging. So it stores the energy. So the energy from your electricity goes into your phone. Okay, so it stores up the energy. So the bonds inside in the products lock in the energy, and they have it stored inside them. And that's why they have more energy. That gets rid of them. Where is it getting the energy from? It's getting it from the surroundings. The air, it's soaking in the heat energy, and that's why it feels cold. So if I hold an ice pack, What's, where's the ice pack chemicals getting the energy from? They're so, they're taking it off me. They're taking off, they're taking my heat and they're locking it into the ice pack. So that's why it feels cold to me. Is that okay? So that's why this looks like this. I know it's hard to kind of get your head around, but that's absorbing in heat. So we always think of an ice pack as being useless, but the chemicals in there actually have more energy than before you used. And you just can't use the ice pack again. Um, I wonder if I leave this and come back to it. There's a simple experiment for heat of reaction. I'll leave this and we'll do that maybe on a, on a different day. I'll go to the calculations. I'll come back to that. I'll go back to that as well. Um, yeah, we'll come back to that. We'll do all that together um, another day. We'll do some of the... I want to get on to some of the calculations today if I can. So, we have a couple of definitions that are very alike one after the other. So again, if you want to follow this in your books, then you can. So the first one that we meet is heat of combustion. So heat of combustion is, again, use the, the names to help you put the definition together. The heat of combustion is the heat um, change in kilojoules 
when a mole of substance is completely burned in excess oxygen. A couple of key points in that. Heat change in kilojoules, so joules measure energy, kilojoules are mean that there's a thousand joules in one kilojoule, so a kilojoule is just a thousand joules, and you have to burn a mole of something in excess oxygen. Okay, so sounds a lot, sounds very complicated, but let's look at what that involves. So this is a balanced equation of burning a fuel. So the fuel up here, can we identify what the fuel is actually? C4H10. Maybe if you're not, we're not too sure what that is, draw it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But hydrogen is everywhere there. Okay, I'm not going to waste time drawing. But what molecule would that be? Four, hydrogen, four carbons and 10 hydrogens. Carbon number four in your alkanes. Butane. So I am burning butane in oxygen. So by definition, heat of combustion is the heat you get when you burn one mole of a substance in loads and loads of oxygen. If you have excess oxygen, means you have loads of it. So does this equation match up to your definition of what um, heat of combustion is? So read the definition again and look at the equation in red. I know red is a terrible colour to use on the board, but does that match up? So don't take down the equation in red. Heat of combustion is the heat change, which is over there, when in kilojoules, which it is over there, when you burn a mole of a substance in excess oxygen. Do you think that matches up to heat of combustion? Hands up who's saying yes. Hands up who's saying no. Okay, a couple of us are spotting. Now, what's wrong with this equation on by their, your definition? You, you have two moles. This is my fuel. It's This is my butane. For this to be an equation for heat of combustion, you have to have one mole of the fuel. What have I got? Two moles. So, sorry. <laughs> you have to change this. I can easily make it heat of combustion. What can I do? This is two moles, and it's all the way across. Look at the maths equation. I have to have it as one mole. Divide across by two. So, how do you divide all of this by two? So, I have two of these, so just make one. C4H10 plus, how do you divide 13 by two? You can change oxygen coming as O2, so what will I have to do? It's not fully correct, but six and a half oxygens. Okay, so you can make halves if we need to. What will eight moles of carbon dioxide become? Four moles. What will 10 moles of water become? Five. What happens here? This is like if you half your coal, how much heat will you produce? Divide by two. So your delta H would be half of this. So um, I have it done, I think, hopefully from before. So that is your equation. And when you divide that by two, it's minus 2860 kilojoules. So that is your equation for, this is actually the equation for heat of combustion. And would they ask that? They could, yeah. If this is coming up, you'll see how it comes up in your calculations. But yeah, you might have to spot that. You need to, you, they ask you this, so if you learn this definition, you should be able to spot when it's not correct down here then. So heat of combustion is when you burn one mole of a fuel, release the energy in kilojoules and you have um, excess oxygen. We have to be able to, and again, we're going to practice this in a way as we do the calculations, but you do need to be able to spot, hold on a second, to burn a fuel, you have to burn one mole. Can I burn two moles? Yeah, absolutely. It's like when you burn two buckets of coal, you can. But for this definition, it has to be one mole. So this is fine, it's balanced, it's perfect, it makes sense, but does it equate to this? No. That is what matches up with this. So you have to have one more. There has to be a one in front of whatever you're burning. So there's one example of, of us burning butane. Now, again, all this ties in, we end up going full circle when we do our calculations, because we'll see all this, um, this is what all this section is about. All will be concentrated on the secret, so. Is that okay? Well, let's go how to measure it. So there's a bit of theory before we go into calculations. So how do you measure how much fuel or heat a fuel produces? We use something called a bomb calorimeter. So a calorimeter is anything that measures heat changes in science. 
A bomb calorimeter measures fuels. And a calorimeter, a calorimeter is any container that's used to measure heat changes. This is a specific type. And why? Because we have a little thing inside in our calorimeter called the bomb. And you put it into the calorimeter and generally you put your fuel inside that little bomb and you measure it. You measure how much you put in, sorry. Okay, the bomb is put into a container of water, which is called the calorimeter. Oxygen is pumped into the bomb. This is all in your, um, your little book, or the little book or the big book. Um, Ava, is that on where you are in the textbook? Yeah. That's on page? 370 and where well, you're on the small book and it's on? 204. 204. So again, if you're one when you're looking at. So um, we pump oxygen into the bomb, we ignite with electric wires, and then we measure the heat change and we do a big fancy calculation. This is the I'm not going to just stop that, that's not my explanation. I'm going to show you in the diagram. This is um, a definition I'll come back to in a second. The kilogram calorific value is defined as the heat energy produced per kilogram of fuel. Okay, so that sounds very complicated. Break it down, it's actually fairly easy. What is the kilogram calorific value? Calories we know in food measure how much energy there is in them. Kilogram is a kg. Basically, how much energy is in a kilogram of fuel? So the kilogram calorific value of turf, of coal, of petrol, of diesel, or of methane, of propane, of butane, is how much energy you release if you have a kilogram of it. Why a kilogram? Because we can compare every single one of them then. So it's just measuring a kilogram of every single one of them. That is, I think this is what's in your book. Um, so yeah, I'll use this. This is the actual the diagram. So how do you measure how much fuel uh, how much energy a fuel releases? You're not going to put a full kilogram or burn a full kilogram of turf or coal or peat or butane because you'll be there all day. So what we do is we get a small amount, we might get 5 grams and we put it into this thing which is a calorimeter. We, this is the little bomb that we were talking about. So we put it into a, this thing is called a crucible. We don't, don't worry too much about all the detail here, just a quick explanation as to how we work this out. You put your fuel into this thing and we have two wires which are connected up to it. Just like in your engine of your car, this is going to be like the spark plug, this ignites it. Um, you, this is surrounded by water. Inside in the water you have a stirrer, that's to keep the water kind of moving around the outside of the bomb. You have a thermometer and then your wires connect up to something that you can ignite it. So your calorimeter um, measures heat produced. So you're going to get the initial temperature of the water, you're going to put your fuel in here, you're going to ignite it, you're going to see how much energy you get, or how much heat are you get um, on your thermometer. And then, depending on what figures you get, you pop them into a, a, a formula and you'll be able to work out the amount of energy that you got from this. Now, if you put in five grams of, let's say it was coal you put in there, you'd work it up to a kilogram by whatever figure you get. Do you need to do the whole calculation? Is this on the even certain? So these calculations aren't here, but that's how you'd work it out. Then I wanted to compare that to petrol. So you put five grams of petrol in there. You'd put it into a bomb calorimeter, you'd um, ignite it, you'd see what the temperature change was, you'd put that into a fancy equation and you'd work out how much heat was released from this and you'd work it up to a kilogram. Now you can compare the two of them. You can do that for whatever amount of fuels you want. So this is the thing that measures the heat release. Yeah. So is it just the kilogram calorie and the definition that you're asking that as well as the um, I'll show you, this, they haven't asked much on the bomb calorie before, to be honest. Okay, it doesn't really ever come up um, in, in a big way, so. Um, so would that ever be asked as an experiment? No, no, that's not in one of our mandatory experiments. No, no, it's just a bit of knowledge on it. It's like your mass spectrometer, you don't use that but you need to know a little bit about it. And again, your mass spectrometer, all you need to know are your five separation phases. Vaporization, ionization, separation, and detection. Okay, so your five steps. So again, just have a vague and, and brief understanding of, kind of what that is. So what is this used for? To measure, measure the kilogram calorific value. What is that? That's the amount of energy produced when you burn a kilogram of a fuel. How do you do it? You put some of the fuel into a bomb calorimeter, you ignite it, you know the heat change or the temperature change, and then you put that into a formula and you're able to work out the, how much energy is released. Okay. And if we have time, I'll go back over kind of any of the questions that's been asked on that, because there, there's not that many. 
And that's an actual picture of it. So that's the bomb, excuse me, that goes in to the calorimeter and then your stir. The stir just makes sure the, the heat or the, you know, this starts to heat up, that it starts to heat the water evenly. So that's what the stir does. And you have a little inlet for oxygen. Why do you think you pump oxygen into your fuel? To make sure that that's there for it to burn. So. All right, there's nothing, again, there's nothing major that we have to take from that. Um, that's heat of combustion and how we measure fuels and how much energy they release. This is a slightly different definition um, and you need to know the difference between the two of them. Heat of combustion is when you burn one mole of a fuel, how much energy in kilojoules it releases and you use excess oxygen. Heat of formation is the same words are up here, it's just a different definition. Heat of formation is the heat change when you have one mole of a substance, you measure it in kilojoules, it's going to be the same definition so far, the end is different. When you form a mole of a substance from their elements in their standard state. Again, a definition that we need to know and we need to be able to kind of put it into practice. And you can be asked to put together the heat of formation of just about anything. So, um, I'll give you a few examples. So, let's pick water. The heat of formation is how much energy is given off or taken in when you form a mole of that substance. So, if I'm forming a mole of a substance, if I'm putting together an equation, where, am I, where does forming happen? The left hand side or the right hand side? If I form something, if I make something, sorry, it's probably another way of asking it. You make something. Remember, it's like in home ec or business model or factory, you make the things on the right hand side. So what I make has to go this side. So it's a slightly different equation to what maybe um, we're used to dealing with. I need to form how much of the substance on the right hand side? <coughs> One mole. So I'm going to go through a few examples of it. So I'll pick carbon dioxide. So what is the heat of formation of carbon dioxide? CO2. I start off with that. One mole has to be in front of it. Why? My definition says one mole. So I'm going to form one mole of carbon dioxide from its elements in their natural state. What elements do I have of carbon dioxide? Carbon plus oxygen. You have to separate them out. It's like the Lego pieces. You separate all the elements out. As they are formed in their natural state, how do you the answer away. How do you find oxygen in its natural form? How does oxygen flow around? How, what, what form are we breathing it in? O2. Okay, oxygen always goes around in pairs. Carbon, what form do I, what structure or how does it normally come? Just see. Yeah, it's kind of by itself. Metals generally go by themselves. Iron, um, kind of most metals actually will generally just be found by themselves. So carbon is always found by itself. So, I cannot touch the right hand side. This is how these are formed in their natural state. The only other thing now I have to do is balance it. I can't go near this because that's one mole. It's in my definition. So, I literally, I can't do anything with that. I can't change the big number. I can't change the small number. That has to stay the same. So, I have to change this in whatever way I need to, to make it balanced. I need one carbon on the left hand side. There is one. I need two oxygen on the left. There are two there. So, do I need to do anything else? No. It's done. That's an equation for the heat or the formation of carbon dioxide. And with that, you'd be given a value. The heat change might be minus two, three, two, seven, three. Um, that's, why two, seven, three in my head? Kelvin, I don't know why that's teaching it too long. Um, delta H is two, seven, three um, kilojoules per mole. So you might be given a value with that. Right, let's come up with another one. So what about if you were told, I should leave that there really, um, what would the heat of formation or the equation for the heat of formation of, we do some simple ones, water be, H2O. I'm gonna pick the ones that always come up. The important thing is I'm forming water. I have to form a mole of it. So this is, you're working in reverse. I have to form a mole of it. When I'm forming my one, one mole of water, I have to form it from the elements that make it up in their natural state. So there's two elements in there. Hydrogen and oxygen. There's my oxygen again. There's my oxygen. What is the state? We'll start with that because I'm giving you the answer. Oxygen is always formed as O2. 
2. What about hydrogen? How, is it, how does that go around H2? Hydrogen has to be found in pairs because it, it has one electron in its outer shell. So it always goes around together in pairs. Now I need to balance it. You can touch this. Why can I not touch that? Because I have to match up to the formula for the definition. So how will I make this work? I have two hydrogens on the right, I have two on the left, that's fine. I have two oxygens on the left and one on the right, but I can't touch this. So how do I make this work? You have to. In theory, can that exist? No. But to make this work, I think, you know, it's fine. But in theory, that wouldn't actually exist. So that's your heat of formation. And again, there'd be a number attached to that. So let's say it's 300 kilojoules per mole. That means every time that I put a mole of water together from hydrogen and oxygen, that much energy gets released, is what that means. So if I had hydrogen and oxygen and I stuck them together, that much energy would be released as heat. Okay, what would happen if it said this? That would mean when I stick this and this together and create this, that much heat gets absorbed, put those together. So sometimes when you stick things together, heat gets given out, and sometimes when you stick things, things together, heat gets absorbed and the temperature goes down. Depends on what you're making, the reactor. So that's your heat formation of water. Okay, let's go to so that's water, carbon dioxide, and what's the other one that comes up? Water, carbon dioxide. I picked one of the um, a hydrocarbon. So what about if I wanted to see the heat formation of butane? What would I have to do? Where do I put butane? Mm -hmm. The right hand side. Okay, butane's formula from a couple of minutes ago is C4H10. What's important is that it has to be one mole. Can't change that. Okay, now I need to form butane from its elements in a natural state. I have carbon and I have hydrogen. We've said it already. What state does carbon normally come as? It comes by itself. Hydrogen always comes as H2. I need to balance that to make it work. How many carbons do I need to put over here? Four. How many hydrogens do I need to make that work? Five. There's an equation for the heat of formation of butane. If I wanted to form butane, one mole of it, from its elements in their natural state, that's what the equation would look like. And I might get that much heat absorbed when that happens. So you need to be able to put these together. Um, but they're, they're fairly simple once you get used to them. So the heat of combustion is when you burn a mole of the fuel, so it has to be on the left hand side. Heat of formation is when you form a mole on the right hand side. So use the definition to help you when you're coming up with these. So that is. Okay, so again, kind of something similar. Does that equation represent the heat of formation of water? Why not? Because it's two moles. Any easy way that I could change that to the heat formation of water? Divide across by two, because then you're going to have one mole on the right hand side. What would you do with the heat given off? Half that as well. And that would give you the formula there as well. Okay. Um, Previous slide, that is the heat of formation. Confusing myself. And you have the, the heat chain. Okay, and uh, we answer this question. Is this equation, I'm just going to make your heads sore, is this equation the heat of formation of water or the heat of combustion of hydrogen? Does that represent, I'll ask you each question in a bit, does it ask you, or does that equation? represent the heat of formation of water? Yeah. yeah. Why? How would you justify that and explain why? One mole on the right hand side. One mole on the right hand side? Is it coming from its elements in their natural state? Being balanced? Yeah. Is that an equation for burning hydrogen? The combustion of hydrogen? What does burning mean again, do we say? Reacted with oxygen. For it to be the heat of combustion, how much of it do we have to have? Excess. So again, we presume it's excess, but for my fuel, what do I need to have? 
one mole. Do I have one mole of my fuel? So does that represent the heat of combustion of hydrogen? Yeah. So it's both, depending on what you're looking for. It's the heat of formation of water and it's also the heat of combustion for hydrogen. So there's two boxes ticked off. So there's both definitions, it ticks off both of them, so it's actually both. Now this is another one of these definitions. We go full circle when we get through to the calculation because we're using every single one of these together. Hess's law is another law. There's a lot of definitions of this, you can see. Um, law of conservation of energy, something from physics, states that you cannot create or destroy energy, you can only change it from one form to another. You might remember that from doing research. If you have um, electrical energy coming into the socket, we change it into light energy, or um, the heat energy, that's a bad example. Um, I had food for lunch, okay, I'm using that energy to heat my body, and I'm converting some of that into sound energy when I'm talking to you, so energy gets changed from one form to the other. So that means, that's what that law states, law of conservation of energy. That's not Hess's law, by the way, this is a standard Hess's law is down here. This is something, um, this is, that's a physics definition there. Energy can't be created or destroyed, you can only change it from one form to another. You did that when you were in junior service when you were looking at, you know, how do you change light energy to sound energy to heat energy to electrical energy, how do you go between them? Okay, Hess's law is underneath. This is the one that we, that's new to us. Hess's law states, if you have a chemical reaction and it takes place in a number of stages, the sum of all of the heat changes in the separate stages is equal to the heat change if the reaction is carried out in one stage. That sounds very complicated. If I had a bucket of coal and I burned half the bucket, and you got a certain amount of heat released, and then you burn the second half of the bucket, and you got another chunk of heat released. If you add them together, you'd have the same if you burned it all in one go. It's basically what this is. You, you do steps bit by bit, it's the same as if you did it all in one big go. That's a fancy way of saying that. So bits of things together add up to the whole thing. So Hess's law states that if you do a number of little steps in a reaction, it's the same as if you did it all in one big go. Again, that's just, you know, a simple way of kind of thinking about that is burn half a bucket of fuel in one go, burn the second half in another go, it'd be the same if you burned it all in one go. So that's Hess's law. So what or how are we going to use that? As I said, look, the, the way we link everything that we're doing today together is that. You know, the calculations you've been skipping on your question six. Is, it links everything together and you get to revise all of these bit by bit. Okay, we're going to go straight. I'm going to go to one of the really old ones. There's, one of these comes up every year, basically, on your question six. So you've probably already seen from the few that you've done, question six is really repetitive. Um, it's the same kind of questions on your fuels, like your reference fuels, your heptane, your 2244 trimethyl pentane, your definition for octane, um, octane number, sorry, your four ways of increase in octane number, isomerization, dehydrocyclicization, um, catalytic cracking, adding oxygen, it's the same questions come up over and over again. And the last part of that question is always a calculation. And you're putting together what we've learned there, plus Hess's law. So we go through, I'll go through one. Um, so the question came up that year and it was this. It said, the combustion of methane is described by the following equation. The standard heats of formation of carbon dioxide and water vapor, uh, or water, sorry, are those two figures. Calculate the heat of formation of methane. Okay, we haven't done one of these before, so we're looking at it going, what does that mean? We're going to find out. So let's look at this equation. Does this equation represent the heat of combustion of methane? So to represent burning methane in oxygen, yeah, 
How do you know? You have one mole of it. So I have one mole of my methane, I'm burning it in oxygen. I know you kind of might be wondering in excess oxygen. If it's balanced, you take it that it's excess, and it is balanced. So we burn one mole of this and we release our energy over there. So this is the heat of combustion of methane. They told me it's there, that it is in the heat of combustion. And they told me the heat that you get released um, when you do that. The next part they tells me the standard heats of formation of carbon dioxide and water vapor are this and this respectively. Now, what I need to do then is calculate the heat of formation of methane. So what you need to do is put together equations for everything you've been told here. So I'm going to call this equation one. You're going to end up with a couple of equations. That's equation one. Put a number one beside that. I'm going to put a number two beside the next one. Number two is coming from this point here. They've told me the heats of formation of carbon dioxide are this figure and this figure respectively. Can I come up with an equation for the heat of formation of carbon dioxide? We should be able to. We did it there a while ago. What does heat of formation mean? What am I doing? Am I burning or creating carbon dioxide? Heat of formation. Creating. How much of it do I need to make? One mole. What do I need to make it from? One by my definition? Carbon and oxygen as they come naturally. So what do I need to do here? Put my oxygen at two. Now I need to balance it. One there, two there, it's done. Do I know a figure for that? What, how much energy gets released? I do. They've told me it is the first one there, so it's minus three, nine, four. Don't worry too much about the units. Kilojoules per mole. That's, that's an equation I just put together. Okay, and you will get marked for doing that. The next equation they told me, I know the heat of formation of water. So I'm going to call this equation three. And I'm going to put that together as uh, water, heat of formation. Do I create or burn water in that case? Create, H2O, must be a mole. What do I form it from? Hydrogen and oxygen. Must be in their natural states. Last thing I need to do is balance it. So that's fine, this needs to be a half. Do I have a figure attached to that? Yes, I do, it's this. So that's minus 286 kilojoules per mole. That's equation one, this is equation two, this is equation three. Can I, or what am I looking for in the question? I'm looking for another equation, Equal, I'm gonna call it equation four. Calculate the heat of formation of methane. What am I doing in this case? Am I burning or creating methane? Creating. What's my formula for methane? This is where your knowledge of alkenes kicks in. C H4, first member of the family. If you're in any doubt, carbon, methane is the first one, so it must have one, two, three, four bonds drawn if you're in any doubt. One carbon, four hydrogens. Both. How many or how much of it do I need? In mode. What am I going to form it from? Carbon plus hydrogen in its natural or standard state. What do I need to do there? Carbon is fine. What do I do here? Put a two there. Is that okay? Almost there. Do I know a value for this? Delta H equals I do not know. That's the question. So, what have I done up to this point? I've used the information they've given me to come up with those three equations, and I've put a number one or another number beside those. Okay? So, going back to Hess's law, what does Hess's law state? Hess's law states that if you do reaction in bits of steps, and put them together, it equates to the final. So, I don't know what this means, or what, the, what figure this will be. But I do know this, I do know this, and I do know this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, if you like having, um, if you had, strips of paper here and if I had all of these on a strip of paper if I could clip out the bits that I need from the equations that I have can I clip out a bit to put this in here clip out a bit can I put this equation together using the other equations that I already have and if I can then I can just add up the, the heat changes and find out what this is then you say how do I do that that's the next the next step Okay, so just this is your, you know, a, an example. So if you want to take this down as, give me a minute, just take it down as an example. And then we'll, uh, we'll go on from there. 
You don't have this in your exam papers. What, what you definitely don't have. It stops at 2010, I think, is it? This is a really, it's a really old one, but it's still the same kind of questions there. Let's have a remote freeze the thing on the board. Just You're still down that time, Just time, I know some of you are still writing. Who's still taking down? Questions? No, let's go through this one. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh. Is there any questions on where any of the stuff that's up there came from yet? Or are you kind of happy enough with that? Happy enough. Now, I know we still you'll have to learn your definitions, but like, okay. you seem to be fairly okay with where all that came from. What does your unit mean when you see it? Kilograms is basically the energy. And then we all know what a mole is. So how much energy is released every time you form a mole? How much energy is released every time you form a mole? How much energy is released every time you burn a mole? Kilograms per mole is what that means. And you see to the power of minus one, that means the same as that from mass. So if you ever see minus one, it's the same as per whatever that is. Same because it can be, can be confusing sometimes. You know, when you see moles per meter, sometimes in your book you'll see that wrote as moles L minus 1. It means the same thing. So minus 1 means the part or the divided by. Anyone still find that out? Sinead, you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, um, I'll pop up the next. No. I'm gonna have to just put any of those there. Um, <coughs> I am going to blank that out and just have to write all these other units. Sorry. I'm gonna have to get 
get somebody just to call out. Carbon dioxide, water. What do you mean? Now I've got that one was first, was it? Was carbon dioxide second? Yeah, and water and any other one, so that's actually the right one. So, so. Okay, so I'm going to pull all those up there so I have them all on the one slide. So, there are your four equations that we came up with, and we're going to number those and use those for the next step. So, I'm going to number those one, two, three, and four, two, three, and four. So Hess's law states, if I can um, use these three um, equations, clip the bits that I need, stick them together to give me this equation, I should be able to figure out the heat change. So how do you do that? Well, what you need to do is, I need to find the bits that are in this, in the other equations, and I need to um, put them all together. So again, the first time you see this, it's, it'll make sense when we go through one. Um, what I need to do is find I find carbon for um first. Oh. I'll go for meat then. There's a little rule when we do these. Again, it's like um, when you were balancing equations before. Leave the simple things to last. And sometimes you won't even have to include them. Okay, I'm gonna explain what that means as I go. But leave the simple ones to last. Now you are probably gonna have you are gonna have to put all of these in. Um, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'll start with carbon. Is there anywhere an equation, this is the one I need to put together, is there anywhere an equation 1, 2 and 3 where there's carbon in, on its own in an equation? In equation 2. I need to get it on the left hand side if I'm clipping it and putting this together. Is it on the left hand side in the equation I have? Yeah. yeah. So the first thing you're going to do, another new one is, add in equation 2. And equation 2 is C plus O2 gives you CO2 and my heat change from that will be minus 286 kilojoules per mole. So that's my first step. That's minus 294. Oh sorry, do I have those mixed up? Minus, that's the shot my peak. Sorry, minus 394. So I add in that equation and the heat change needs to go in there with it. Okay, what have I done? I've kind of ticked off that. I have a carbon in there now. I need hydrogen in that form by itself. Is there anywhere in an equation, one, two, or three, to where I have hydrogen? Three. Is there a problem with that? You only have one of them. I don't want to have enough. So what you need to do is, how much more do I need? Twice. So how am I going to get this into an equation if there's only half what I need? You're going to have to double equation through. Now you'll, it'll make sense now in a minute how I do all this. I'm going to double equation uh, 3. So again, this is kind of like a separate end activity. I'm going to double equation 3. So I get equation 3. How do I double everything there? 2 times a hydrogen will be 2H2. Two, 2 times a half. Is one, so it'll be O2. And what does that create? I'm gonna get two moles of water. If I double everything in the equation, what's that gonna to do to the amount of heat that I produce? It's going to double that. So you need to double the figure here as well. Minus 286 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so now I double that, I double the sorry, I need to double it. Somebody needs to get a calculator out. Not the figure. 572. Okay, so I've done that. Last thing I need to do now is look and see can I, or is there methane up there anywhere in any of the equations? First. First. 
Is it on the side that I need it on? Is it on the right hand side? No, it's on the left hand side. So how am I going to get this onto the right hand side? We're going to reverse the entire equation. So what does that look like? So I'll just write the what I need to do, reverse equation one. So I need to swap the side that everything is on. So carbon dioxide is going to go to the left, as is my two moles of water, and that's going to equate or equal CH4 plus two or twos. And I've swapped, so if something was exothermic going forward, going back to your equilibrium chapter, what will happen if I read it from right to left? It will go to the other one. So I just basically flip the sign there. Flip that sign, so my heat change going this way would be plus 890.4 kilojoules per mole. See the whole lot of that. There. Right, what am I going to do next? I have them all included. So I have included all of the bits of my equation, but they're all still separate. They're all in separate equations. So what I need to do now is get all of those equations that I've come up with and put them all together. And there's one thing you just need to make sure you do. Whatever's on the left hand side goes together and whatever's on the right hand side goes together. So I'm going to start, this is an insanely long equation that I'm going to put together up here now. I'm going to put everything that's on the left hand side that I've underlined in one big equation. So C plus O2 plus the next line, 2H2 plus O2 plus CO2 plus, I want people around the room, 2, which is a little smaller, 2H2O gives me what's on the right hand side, CO2 plus, I'm going to make this a bit smaller, 2H2O, gone, plus CH4, I'll just add it in here, plus 2O2. I had to go on to another line. Everything on the left equals what's on the right. I see that. Okay. And you're kind of going, what am I going to do with that big equation? Three minutes just to get to there. And then we put the last piece of the jigsaw in. So I, know, if I, had, I probably should have actually just done it. I would have had a room, room down the bottom there. But, but everything, does everybody see where that equation came from? But everything from the left hand side of the hour together and everything from the right hand side of the hour together. And now we've one gigantic equation. Bits and bobs. If you were in maths class and you had x's and y's and z's and all sorts together, what do you do in maths class? You have a big long equation with loads of different x's and y's and z's. Put them together. Yeah. And that's what we're going to do next. Now to save us a step, I'll just give you an example. If you had 4x plus 5y equals 5z plus 4x. Do the equation like that. You have 4x on the left and 4x on the right. What would you do in maths? You can bring it over, or even more simple than that, cancel it. Whatever you have on the left, the same thing on the right, just cancel it. So that's what we're going to do on this. If I have the same thing on the left and the same thing on the right, to save myself bringing it over and back, just cancel it. So let's look and see, is there anything that I can cancel where they are? You have to leave everything on the left and the right, but is there anything that cancels straight away? So you have two, you have a carbon dioxide here and you have a carbon dioxide there. I'm going to put a line through that. Okay, that's gone. If I brought it over, it would be plus carbon dioxide minus carbon dioxide, so it would be gone anyways. Um, you have two waters here and you have two waters there. Gone, and gone. You have, what else have I got? Two, two, you have one and two oxygens, and you have two oxygens. There. And then, if you've done it properly, and you go, well, what's left behind? Surprise, surprise, what should be there? You have C plus 2H2, and that's going to give you CH4, which is equation number four, the one we've been looking for. 
last part of this. That's not what the question asked. I put together the equation. What do you think the last piece of the jigsaw is now? But the heat changes. That's what would have been created for each of them. So all you have to do now, you've proved that this is correct, so you just get your heat changes. Your delta H will be equal to minus 394 minus 572 plus 890 and that, that's supposed to be a triangle, is going to equal your answer. So, Nick? Minus 76. Minus 76 kilojoules per mole. If you're not sure what the unit is, read back over your question. It tells you this about 10 times in the question. What your unit is. So that is Hess's law in a nutshell. You've clipped the bits of the equation from the other ones and you've put together the equation that you need, keeping the heat changes as, as you've done it, and then all you have to do is add it together at the end to give you your heat change from the equation you want. So there's a bit of work. So is the explanation from plus because it's reversed, is it? Uh, yeah. When you reverse the equation, and that goes back to your equilibrium chapter. Remember, if it's exothermic region left to right, it's endothermic going in reverse. So if I flip the equation, you just flip the sign. Yeah. And that's very important when you're doing it, because if you didn't flip that, you're going to get a totally different answer down here. Yeah. The equation can go both ways, right? The arrow is pointing one way. You know, these two arrows are pointing one way. Um, so for some of them, they would be only one way, really, in reality. Like combustion is kind of still only one way, yeah. in reality. Like. Unless you're form, heat formation. In the conditions we have, I suppose, you're only ever going to burn, and you're not going to be able to form, form so. Yeah. Um, okay. That all right? Right, I'm going to do another example. It's all just a quick answer to this. Okay, that one's going to go to one where it's given that way. I'll show you this one. I want to get to this one that's very different. Not very different, but has something a little bit different in it. And I'll go through one more example and then might give you a task to try and win yourselves. So this is 20, oh sorry, 2005 question 6. So I think I just started at 2004 and worked my way up through all of them. So you won't have this one in your in your books. But this one said, the combustion of liquid benzene is described as follows. Given the heats of formation of carbon dioxide, liquid water and benzene are as follows. Calculate the heat of combustion of liquid benzene. What do I need to do first? First thing you look at and say, the combustion of benzene is described as the following equation. Is that the heat of combustion for benzene? No. Why not? It's not one mole. So the first thing. Um, you know, is this question book every year? Yeah, guaranteed question six. Yeah. So how would you um, come up with the heat of combustion? That's two moles divided by approximately. That's all you have to do. So what we're actually looking for is they ask you calculate the heat of combustion of benzene. This was a year where you had to spot. Oh, that's not what I'm looking for because I need one mole. So straight away the equation you have to write down was this. Now you were told loads of other information. You were told that the heat of formation of carbon dioxide, water and benzene are those figures there. Okay, so let's quickly, will we do those three really quickly. So heat of formation of carbon dioxide, which side of the arrow am I going to? Right, CO2. What's my um, elements? Carbon plus oxygen, as they form naturally, there it is, that's one. Two would be um, water, so that's forming a mole of water from its elements in their natural state, balance it, there we go. Next one is the one that's a little bit different, it's benzene, heat of formation of benzene. Which side of the arrow am I going to put it on? 
right hand side. My formula for benzene, hopefully you remember, is C6H6. If in doubt, draw it. How will I form that from its elements in its natural state? Well, its elements are C and H. Hydrogen comes in pairs. This comes by itself, so you need six of those and you need three of those. That's equation number three. Add in equation number four, which is what I'm looking for, and that's where you have to spot that that's not the equation. The equation is half of that. There it is. And that's the one I'm looking for. And you're going to clip those together and you're going to come up with that equation. Okay? And I'll go through this one and I, I, I won't use this as an example to get me. I'll just show you how this worked out and then I'll go through another one. I'll get you to do another, do another one. So, sorry, equation one, two, and three are the ones I showed you there. The one I'm looking for is that one. So, the only thing that was a little bit different that time was that you had to half the equation they gave you. You had to spot that. And just that could happen again where they, they just try and throw you. So you needed to know that it had to be one mole that was burned. So what I need to do now is put together that red equation using the black ones. So is there um, benzene anywhere in equation one, two, or three? I know that board is in a good place there, but is there anywhere in equation one, two, or three where there's benzene? Yeah, equation three. Is it on the right side? Where it needs to be? Go again, no. How are you going to get the benzene that you need in equation three onto the left hand side? Reverse equation three. That will reverse the heat change. So the first thing you need to do is reverse equation three. That reverses the heat change. Is there, now this is the, this is the little nugget of information. It's not really in your book. Look at the equations. There's oxygen here, there's oxygen here. There's oxygen in a couple of places. By adding in and doing the equation, you're going to be adding in oxygen anyways. So, as I said, it's not really a rule. Because it's in a couple of equations, don't bother putting that in as a separate thing. You're going to be adding it in with some of the equations. So, skip the oxygen. So it's going to come in naturally with some of the other equations. So I skip that. I go to carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is only up there in one place. Oxygen is up there in two. So, look at carbon dioxide. Is it there anywhere? It's on equation, I know it's hard to see there, it's in equation one. Is it on the right hand side? Yeah. Is there enough of it? No. How many more times carbon dioxide do you need? Six. So you're going to multiply equation one by six. And you multiply the heat change by six. So that's what you need to do with equation one. Multiply equation one by six. And that's what happens. Everything in the equation gets multiplied by six. Each part and the heat change. What about equation three? I sign on equation three. Um, the last bit is water. I need to get some water in there. So that's that put in. That's this put in. Now I need to get three moles of water. Is there water up there anyway? It's only in one place. Equation two. Is there enough of it? No. You need three times it. Is it on the right side? Yeah. So all I need to do is add in three times equation two. And that's going to add in three times the heat as well. See why I didn't add in the oxygen? Because you have some oxygen here and you have some oxygen here, you've added it in anyways. And it's in two equations, so it comes in naturally. What am I going to do with those equations? Put them together. The equations together. The equations really don't need to go together because the bottom line is the heat change. What does it show or prove if you put them together and cancel them? That you've done it properly. If they don't match up to give you this, something's wrong. You need to go back. You, can't add, you could just do this right now. Add these together and off you go. That's what I'm saying. That's, this is a check to see, you know, am I doing it properly? Because if, if it doesn't match up, something's not quite right. So, um, I'll go back to that in a second. Um, I can put this up anyway, so this will be up on the, on the teams. But, um, so I'm going to cancel, put them all together, whatever's on the left, and right, that are the same, you cancel them. So the carbons go, the hydrogens go, and what do you get left behind with? You get left behind with this equation. All you have to do then is add your heat changes, and you get this as your answer. So this is a check. If that doesn't match up to what you're looking for, then something's wrong. But you technically wouldn't even have to do this part. It's, this is all that matters, this number here. So the only thing that was different from that one was that you had to spot that the equation you were given was not the heat of combustion. It was two moles rather than one, and then the everything else was the exact same after that. 
Okay, are there any other ways this has come up in the past? There's kind of two other little tweaks. They don't really, they're nearly the same other than, you know, tiny little bits that change. It's not, it's not like your equilibrium. Remember we had all the different versions, the x squared and the x's and all that. There's a few different versions. This is fairly straightforward, to be honest. Um, I load these up online and I'll go through them if you want. Let's go with this one. As it's a little bit different. Ooh, I don't want that in. Okay, read you don't have 2008, do you? No. Write a balanced equation for the combustion of ethanol. Is the first statement that they give you there. And then they tell you, given the heats of formation of ethanol, carbon dioxide and water as these three figures, calculate the heat of combustion of ethanol. So sometimes you get asked for to come up with an equation for the heat of combustion. We haven't done this yet. So how do you put together a heat of combustion? Anytime I burn any fossil fuel, we have to, we're going to learn this um, today. We, we probably know it anyways. The, the fuel they're asking me to burn is ethanol. They've given me the formula. So it's C2H5OH. When I burn a fuel, what do I react to it? Oxygen. Has to be oxygen. And burn any hydrocarbon, and what do you produce? Two products carbon dioxide and water vapor. Okay. That is a nugget that we all have to learn today. You burn turf, peat, coal, oil, petrol, diesel, two things you make, carbon dioxide and water vapor. Okay, that's a nugget that has to be up there. Because if it's come up a couple of times where you have to come up with an equation like this, you have to just know that that's carbon dioxide and water vapor that you create. Okay, out the exhaust of your car, there are the two things that are coming up. Up the chimney when you're burning coal or turf, that's what's going on in your chimney. Those two things. What's not done in my equation that I've just wrote down there? It's not balanced. Okay, and to balance the equation, we've done a little bit of it, Quick rule of thumb again, leave this till last. The thing before the arrow, that's always the easiest thing to finish off. So let's look and see on the left hand side. I can't touch the fact that I have one mole of that. Why not? Heat of combustion is burning one mole. So that's one mole of my fuel. Burning excess oxygen to release these two. Okay, how many carbons do I have on the left? I have to make two on the right, so how am I gonna do that? Two there. I have, count them up, I have six hydrogens on the left. How many do I have on the right? Two. How do I make this six? Three. Okay, and remember there's six here, you have five here and one there, so that's now balanced. And how many oxygens are on the left? Three. How many on the right? Two times two is four, plus three is seven. Okay, you have one there that I can't touch. So I have six more to make. How am I going to make this six? Three there. Okay. And that is how you come up with a heat of combustion for something. You could be asked to come up with a heat of combustion for anything. What about if I said, right now, come up with a heat of combustion for, I'd come up with a hydrocarbon pentane, C5H12. Okay. I mean, just as a side task, can you just come up with an equation for the heat of combustion or the Balanced equation for the heat of combustion of pentane. Let's try it there. C5H12. What would your balanced equation be? And then I'll give you one more after that. I'm going to give you benzene. Ethanol is a bit different because, you know, it's, it's, it's formula is a bit different there. We we'll go through the question then afterwards. I know I'm going off on a tangent here because this is the other way that the questions are different. They ask you to come up with a heat of combustion yourself. So what would your, how would you burn butane? Or pentane, sorry, is what I have up here. So I'll do that as like a question. And then I want you to burn benzene. So come up with an equation to burn benzene or combust benzene. I'm not going to do any more than tell you that. I'll give you the name, Lindsay, but that's it. This is question one. This is question two. So there are little side calculations that I want you to do now.
exactly. Put up the, the balance equations here now in the book. So you're probably working on the second one by now. Who's finished the first one? What about just who's still working on it? If you're totally done with those, you can start. See, can you challenge yourself? Can you come up with some of the equations that you need for this question? So you have equation one, which is the balanced equation for the heat of combustion of ethanol. You need three more: heat of formation of ethanol, the heat of formation of carbon dioxide, and the heat of formation of water. So you have to come up with those three equations yourself, and you're going to number them: number two, three, and four. You put your heat beside them. Who's still working on equation two there? Has everybody finished equation one and two? Yeah, okay, I'll quickly run through this. So, um, again, these are just slightly different variations if they were to come up, which they will over the next couple of nights when you're doing your homework. So, if the question said, come up with the heat of combustion for pentane, you need to know the formula. What if you couldn't remember how many carbons and hydrogens are in pentane? What would you do? That would help you out. Would draw it out. Quickly sketch it and count them up. Do it old school if you're in any doubt. There's five carbons and twelve hydrogens. So I'm going to save myself the, the bother of drawing it out. Need to balance it. Leave this to last. It's just a little rule of thumb when you're balancing these equations. This is the easiest one to finish off. So five carbons on the left, five now on the right. I have twelve hydrogens on the left, two on the right. So I'm going to turn that into six. Oxygen is the easiest one because there's no, you know, it's one number. So that's the easiest one to leave to last. You have ten, sixteen on the right. How will I make that sixteen? Eight. Quick little nugget for everybody. What if it was 15 oxygens on the right? How would you make this 15? Seven and a half. So sometimes you have to use halves. Okay? Just in case that came up. Sorry, what was it? It was eight, was it? Eight. Okay, benzene. So for the benzene one, you needed to know the formula of benzene. If in doubt, I'm going to draw it out as well. So benzene, then you said it there a few minutes ago, is C6H6. You still burn any fuel in oxygen. You're going to make carbon dioxide and you're going to make water. That is six carbon, so you do that. Six hydrogen, so this needs to be three. And you have 12, this is an example of it. 12 and three is 15. You square root of that is coming seven and a half oxygens. Okay? Seven and a half, exactly. So that's how you balance it on the left and the right in that. Uh, there was one other slightly different one. It's coming back to me now. In one year, I know where I told you to go ahead with the question. There's one other slight difference that came up. One year they asked you, come up with a formula for the heat of combustion of hydrogen. The only one that's different. How do you come up with that? What happens when you burn hydrogen? I need one mole of it. What do you burn anything in? Oxygen. What's the problem with trying to create carbon dioxide here? There's no carbon. So what's the only, this is why hydrogen is great fuel, what's the only, the only product is the water vapor, steam. How do you balance that? You have, um, you can't change the one here, remember, it has to be one mole. So that is two on the left, two on the right, you have two oxygens on the left and you have one on the right, 
So how am I going to make that work? Do a half of that. There's your balanced equation for the heated combustion of, of um, height. So that's that. Okay, well I'll let you try and do some of that one. Would you be okay with the heat formation of ethanol? You should be. Just start with one mole of ethanol on the right and form it on the left. So come up with your four equations there. That's equation one. I'm going to leave that up there. We need three more equations. That's the one we're looking for. What is the... What are the other three, other three equations? Equation one, two, three, four. Can you just, have some of you started that? I'm just on it. The first one is the one you're looking for. You can put a question mark beside equation one if you want. Does it matter what way you number them? No, as long as you have all four up there and you know that which one you're looking for. So put a question mark always beside the one you're trying to put together using the other ones. Don't worry, anyway, this is still only the second full one that we've seen, so. If you're still kind of a little bit confused by them or they're not making sense, you know, we still have loads of work to do on them. But these, from now on, you're going to be able to do all of question six, which is the great news. You're already able to do another full question now on the, on the paper. We've obviously got practice to do on these. So after we have the three equations, do, mm -hmm. you, do you leave the oxygen? Like, do you just ignore leave the oxygen? Leave the oxygen, yeah. Because, um, you look oxygen in a couple of places. So by adding in the other things, you're adding in the oxygen automatically. Like, it's not written down anywhere to do that. You just kind of have to know that I don't need, you don't need to add it in because there's loads of it there. The other ones are only in one equation. There's another way of kind of looking at it. Whereas oxygen is in multiple ones, so you, you know. And if you have that done, see if you can keep going all the way down and, and get a heat of um, formation for it. Or sorry, well, we look for a heat of combustion in this case. So the delta H is this one. So I'm going to start putting the equations together there. So you can check to see if you're correct. So what am I looking for? Formation of ethanol is C2H. Did you get, sorry, I haven't been having the heat changes in there. Did you get those as your equations? And then your heat change is going with them. delta H equals minus 278. This delta H is minus 394. And the last one is minus 286. Could you have gone uh, C2H6 plus uh, half oxygen? So for number two, could you have gone? Uh, C2H6 plus a half oxygen. C2. Yeah, two, uh, but little two, is it? No. Uh, yeah. As in, or and put two there? Or do they have to be separate? They have to be separate, yeah. It's carbon. Metals always come by themselves as atoms. So if you have more than you have more of the individual things. It's not. C2 means that you have two of them together. 
as opposed to having two single links. Who's all the way down to a final figure? Does anyone know that part? The next part, is it? Put them together. Okay. Yeah, we go through. Is that there? Some people are still stuck on that one. I can go through and look at loads of these. I can go through as many of them as we need to. Get to this part and if you're happy, continue on. And if you're not, I'm going to do another. Um, I have enough room here. I use the. I use the slideshow instead. They're the equations that we all should have there. Again, I just have it up the top so that. So what you're trying to do is use equation one, two, and three to make equation four. Who is giving it a go for? Who thinks they're rocking it? Half on the fence of it. There's no problem. Look, as I said, this is still only the second one that you've seen. The board is ridiculously hard to clean. Will I go through another one? Is that the easiest thing to do? Go ahead. Do you know um, how when you're trying to find them, you said you need to get them on the right side? Yeah. It seems to me you need to get them on the other side either. Yeah. So just reverse everything. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what? Drop the bio and we'll do this. Okay. Again, this, this is only 2008. The great news is we have 13 more years we can do. So it's plenty of practice. So um, there's your three equations, there's equation four. Are we all happy enough to get to that stage? If we are, we've three quarters of the hard part done. The next bit then is, is how do you come up with this equation using the other equations? So there's four bits in the equation I'm looking for. I have a nice one done here in a different colour so it's easy to spot. But one, two, three, and four. So I need to find these four bits in the bits in the above and put them in and snip them in and add up the heat changes at the end. This is only up in equation one, two, three, or one, two, or three in one place. There is loads of oxygen in the bits up there. There's, oxygen is in every single equation in this one. So I'm not going to specially add that in because by adding in the other equations and messing around with those, you're going to put oxygen in anyways. Carbon dioxide is only in one place, so I'm going to add that in. Water is only in one place, so I'm going to have to add that in. But the oxygen you want because it's in everywhere. So by adding in some of the other equations, you're adding it in anyways. That's not in your book. That's not written down anywhere. It's just something we, we learn as we go. So the first question is, how am I going to add in or come up with this equation from the other three? So how will I snip it and put it where I want it? Um, ethanol is up in equation one, two, or three. Which equation is it in? Equation one. I need it on the left hand side. Where is it in equation one? The right hand side. So what am I going to have to do? I need to add in equation one and I need to reverse it. When you reverse equation one, what would that do to the heat change? It'll become a plus. So the first step is you add in equation one and you reverse it. So that is what I'm adding in. So basically I've just got everything reversed it and changed the heat change. Can everybody see I am just saving myself a bit of hassle here by writing it all out? everybody see where that came? Second one, so that's a little tick beside this. Now I have um, ethanol and I have it on the left hand side, so that's matched up. Now I want to put in some oxygen. Um, I already have some oxygen in there and there's going to be some more going in after a while, so I'm going to skip that. I need to get some carbon dioxide on the right hand side of an equation. Is there carbon dioxide up here anywhere? Yeah, which equation? Two. I need two moles on the right hand side. How many moles and where are they on the equation I'm looking at? You have one mole on the right hand side. What are you going to do to equation two to fix that? Double it. So you double everything. So I'm going to have two carbons, two moles of oxygen, two moles of carbon dioxide, and you're going to create double heat. So you're going to have double equation two, and you're going to add that. Okay, sorry, this is everything coming in one more. So is there any way to put three hydrogens in equation one to two and double your reverse? That is a typo, I'd say. It should be three, I don't know why it's two and a half there. That's about it, that should be three. Yep. And equation three is, sorry, so I have that now added in, and in the correct place. This one should have come in all in one go. 
Three waters are needed on the right hand side. Where is the water in equation one, two, or three? Three. What side is that? Right hand side. Is there three modes? No. So I need to multiply equation three by three. All the bits get multiplied by three, and the heat change get multi gets multiplied by three. Now when you think about it, I now have a full list of equations that have all of this stuff. Now I'm not sure about that, but that should be left. I have all of these bits on the correct side. I have all extra bits as well, but I have everything I need now added into my equations. What's the last step? Put everything on the left together, everything on the right together. They should cancel and leave this. And then my heat changes are just added together to give me what that would be by itself. Okay, all sounds really easy. So I know that's it, just takes a little bit of practice spotting where that comes from and practice seeing how to do it and practice seeing that you don't need to add any oxygen in this case. Okay, do you want to have, leave that up there for a second so you can jot that down? Yeah. Did anybody really get those? Stop. Okay, so again, this is only practice, this is one um, practice goal number two. I'm saying that we have. 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and the one you're going to do in 23. By the time you get to that one, you're going to know the inside out. Sorry, again, yeah, the typo there is what you need right now, so I can't read that, so I'm just going to take it down for a second. So I'll put up the, the next part in a second, but you should be able to you know, start putting everything together. Give yourself a full line and put everything that's on the left hand side of the arrow together and everything on the right hand side of the arrow together. And then add the heat changes together and see what figure you get. And don't forget, if you ever reverse an equation, you need, you need to reverse the heat change. So that's where the minus, or the plus 278 came from as opposed to the minus 278 in equation 1, 2, and Again, this is all coming back to that Hess's law that we were describing earlier on, that if you put, if you have an equation that you don't know, which is the red one, you can come up with the heat change if you put the other equations together. It's like if you clipped the bits that you need and you stick, stick them together to come up with it. Questions up there? We've asked plenty, which is great. Is there any other ones that, or anything up there that people are wondering where it came from? See what happened when you multiplied equation three by three? You got three half oxygen, so you get one and a half oxygen. Is everybody is everybody okay with that? Just kind of pasteurize it for a second, just so everyone's okay. See, this was a half an oxygen, and you multiplied it by three, so three times a half is one and a half. In case you were wondering where that came from. So it's the same in math, a half multiplied by three is three halves, or one and a half. Did people, um, did you get a chance to stick those together and cancel things? Who's still working on that? No problem with here. So cancel what's Answer what is common on the left and the right. 
and the sign that you're correct is if you're left with the equation in red. If you're not left with that, you might have to go back and check to see whether you've done something wrong. If it is the equation in red, there's a great chance that when you add these together, you're on the, you know, with the right answer. Everybody's still taking down what I have on the board. Everybody's taking on past that. So you should have ended up with that uh, um, equation where you added all the left and the right and side together. What can I go cancelling? What's common on the left and the right? You have your one, two carbons on the left, two on the right. You have three hydrogens on the left, three on the right. Then you add up the rest. So you should have your ethanol and your... You had three and a half oxygens on the left. You have a half on the right. They won't cancel. So what do I need to do? Bring it over. Three and a half minus a half is three. And then you're left with your carbon dioxide and your um, water on the right hand side. That's just a little check to see whether you're correct. It doesn't really matter, the bottom line is the heat change, which is the figures. Add those together and you should have got minus 1368. Who managed? I know some of you might have been under pressure there with time to get it. Did you get down to it? I'm going by what I'm hearing. Everybody is fine up to this point. Everybody, when we get those parts, are fine with the ending. So it's just that little bit in the middle, spotting where they come from. And that's just practice. So, as I said, practice makes perfect. Um, do you want to try some of the. Um, you do one more. Um, oh, I'm going to really jump up there. It's 2018. Let's do one of the more recent ones. 2018, 6B. Do that uh, calculation and then you know, So this is calculate the heat of combustion of methane, ethyl, which you don't need to know. And you're told the heat of formation of four things. So this is a bit different because we're going to have five equations. Thanks, Ben. I can see that. This is in your exam papers if you need to have a look at it. If you can't read it from there, but or anything, so you can be fine. I picked this one because you have five equations. The next one, you know, not that it was like any harder, but there's five equations you have to come up with. You're given one in this form. Heat of formation of four things. This is the great thing about having this time. Just pop your hand up and I can run down and talk to you. Okay, because everybody's obviously working away on this. So if there's anybody stuck in any way, I'm here doing nothing, so 
Call me down if there's any questions you have. Okay? The only silly question is the one you don't ask. You have to know or know off by heart what methane ethyol is. You're given it. Go. What does that break down to when you're writing When you're forming it, is it? So what's in that compound? Carbon. So what does form this carbon naturally come in? On its own. Hydrogen. On its own. So the only one we're not sure in is sulfur. Anything down it generally comes by itself. All of the but it'll come by itself as well. Ones in the Is that an accurate equation for the heat of combustion that you're given? Yeah. Why? There's one more. So that's just a little check. You have to do that yourselves as well and be aware to do that. Just double check. Is it definitely the heat of combustion? Without stating the obvious, it is a question probably the majority of you are going to do in your leaving cert because it's a nice question and the theory parts are generally nice as well. There is no rush. Who is still putting the five equations together? Is anybody still doing that? I'll leave it a second. So. Put up the, that part of the solution in a second, just so you can have a check in to see, you know, am I correct up until that? If you're feeling confident, by all means, keep, keep going. See so if you can get all the way down to the end. For those that are gone ahead, which of the five do you think you won't have to specifically include? Um, sorry, not equation, but which of these components? 
oxygen because that's going to be there all by in loads of places. So skip the oxygen. You'll probably have to put in all of the other four. If you're not at that, don't worry. Just keep going and watch it out. To check Anthony, or you all have to help. Is there anybody still putting the equations together? No, I'm just going to pop those up on the board. There's the equations. For the heats of formation. Is there one missing there? There is. Balance that for how many oxygen to keep more of it first.
Sorry, I just changed that around. I didn't have it fully edited from the last day. Last time I did this. Did you all get those equations as your? So equation one, it was you were told the heat of formation of that compound was uh, minus 22.8. So I know that's just falling in an awful spot there. Um, sorry, hold on, that's wrong. That's wrong, that's wrong, yeah. Sorry, I copy and paste this stuff. There could be an odd error in this, and I'll just correct it as I go. Yeah, I'm putting this together now. Um, so you have one carbon, uh, that's wrong as well, let's see. You have two hydrogens. It's coming from an old question, I just copy and paste it, so some of these could be wrong. Two hydrogens, and there's no oxygen. This is, we're starting it from scratch. So I need to put together equation number five using the first four equations, basically. So what am I gonna do? Need this compound on the left-hand side. Where is it on the first one? Right. It's on the first one. So what am I gonna do? Reverse equation one. Okay, so you add in equation one, so it's CH3SH goes to C plus 2H2 plus S and the delta H equals 22.8. Is that okay? That's that one ticked off. What will I do with the oxygen? Skip it. If in doubt, look at your other equations. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. It's going to come in naturally. So I skip it. So I take this out. I have three more to get in there. Carbon dioxide is only in one equation. I'm going to have to add it in. It's in equation two. Is it on the right side? Yeah. Is it there one more of it? Yes. So your next step will be just add in equation, uh, that's two. And equation two is, um, where is there? C plus O2 goes to CO2. So that's all you need to do for that one. Is that okay? That's now this one put in. I need two modes of water. What am I going to do? Or where do I find it? Equation 3. What do I need to do with equation 3? Multiply it by 2. So multiply equation uh, 3 by 2. So I need to multiply all of that by 2. So you have 2 H2s plus 2 times a half is 1. So it's O2. Gives you H2O. And then your heat change will be. Two times that? Minus five seven. Five seven. What? Six. Uh, point six. Okay, and I skipped this one. What the heat change for the second one? You only had to add it in, so equation two is minus three nine four. And then the last one, I'm gonna be under pressure here and upper space. Uh, you need to get one more sulfur dioxide on the right hand side. Is it up there anywhere? Yeah. yeah, it's in equation four. Do I have one more of it? Yeah, so you just add in equation four. So then that is what S plus O2 gives me SO2. And then you're going to add in delta H for that one, which is minus 296.8. Okay, you're going to come up with an equation where you add all of those together. I am out of space, so I'm going to do it from where they are on the equations. OK? 
right, to G add, put everything to the left and right hand side together. So again, I'll do it from where they are in the equations here. And everything to the left hand side. Uh, so what's going to cancel? No, when I squeeze it in here, I do it really small, I do it over here. Just about enough time. CH3, SH, plus C, plus O2, plus 2H2, plus O2, plus S, plus O2, gives me C, plus 2H2, plus S, plus CO2, I'm going to have to go down to the next line, plus H2O, plus SO2. Loads of stuff going on there. What cancels? You have this done, so you're going to spot it quicker than I am. There's a carbon, there's a carbon. Um, two sulfurs, where's the S? There's an S, there's an S. Um, two hydrogens and two hydrogens, gone. Is that it? Okay, so add up what you're left with. So you have CH3, SH, plus one oxygen, two oxygens, three oxygens, three or two. Gives me what's left behind um, CO2 plus H2O plus SO2. Not the end of the world, it's not in the fully correct order that they're in here, but they're all there. Even though, sorry, I'm missing a water, am I? You forgot yeah. to double it. And, uh... I forgot to double it. Where was that? Oh, yeah, this should be. Should... Okay. And that's the little indicator. Now, it still wouldn't have made any difference to your numbers, but it's the check to see whether you're all, I did something wrong there, so that's, that should be two there. So now we've ended up with the equation. It's a great indicator that I'm correct, so all I have to do now is add this and this and this and this together, and that's my answer. Okay, what does that work out as when you add those together? Is it plus? 1039. Point. Sorry, uh, one, two, three, nine. One, two, three, nine. Who got one, two, three, nine, point one? Super. Um, Dylan, you fell down on one somewhere here, I'd say, did you? Was it on one of these? Uh, I was just passing along. Okay, but you got this. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, that's the hard part. That's the easy thing to correct. You got all that. You got these, and you get that. That's 99% of the work. This is just easy to fix. And actually, you get a lot of the marks for the equations that, as you're writing down. So don't make this a secret on your exam paper. Show these, show that, show this. You get marks as you go down and on. And obviously, you get marks for the final answer. But if you get this wrong, but you have these right, you're getting loads of marks as you go down. Okay, so it's just practice, practice, practice on and do this. Okay. So, I'm going to. If you're in any doubt, I just have this for the.